millet in a uh, oh. ski. You can't find the direction of the groove with that chip. It's a uh, little over three foot long anyway. Uh, the grain runs ever which way yeah. from one end to the other. And so you can plane it down, but you've got to take it and put it on a drum sander to get it smooth. There's yeah. no way yeah. uh, to keep it from chipping with the grain going every which way. Have you, you run it? Well, um, yes. Uh, okay. Tear out, as far as I'm concerned, is a result of the quality of your planer or joiner. To a certain degree, I'd say 95%. I've gone, I've had three thickness planers, two of them had conventional knives, and now I, I have, have one with a spiral that cutting spiral head. Type head. And I that just hardly have heard any that tear out of it. Uh, yeah, we're, you're, you're kind of breaking up a little bit. Do you have major tear out? What happened? Oh, is it us? Here's a, like, uh, mesquite, the bird's eye maple and curly maple. Yeah. 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 Limits the uh, tear out. It, it really eliminates it. With the How shape. many carbide blades does that have on it? Um, it's something like 60 blades. You, you had one. Man. 60? No, it's, it's more than that. Depending yeah. on the size of your head. Right. My planer, I've only got a 12 inch planer, but uh, mm -hmm. that's got a oh, hell of a big man. I can't <laughs> even think of how many. Uh, there yeah, are. I use a lot of carbide tools for uh, wood turning. Those suckers are expensive. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, are you able to you, twist them around? Are they are they bladed? Are they sharp on all four sides? Are. Where you can they're sharp on all four sides, sides. and yeah. as you wear them down, they're carbide too. Yeah. So when you wear one side, you just shift it 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. You've got actually four blades on one actual blade. Uh -huh. yeah. And I, I just got a uh, one for my, my general, my eight inch uh, general jointer. Uh -huh. And I'm going to be installing that next week. Oh, cool. Yeah. But it, it's really worth it. I've got one on my six oh, yeah. inch jointer. And that thing, oh, it's so quiet. Yeah. Just the noise alone makes it <laughs> extremely quiet. Yeah. Well, I'll give you an and example. It's, really it's, it's nice. like dust. It doesn't clog up the dust collection. Yeah. Too. It's it's just it made a major change for me. I've had my and the word for... doesn't seem to be out about those either. I know they exist, and I hadn't even thought about it when I asked the question. Yeah, but at the time that I was building these, uh, the vanity and my top part, uh, I was so disappointed. It was chipped up so bad. It was the board mm -hmm. for six foot long. And uh, but I had a friend that had a drum sander. We took it over there and smoothed it out, and everything turned out okay. Okay. Yeah. But I don't know anybody that has a, a planer with the carbides. Yeah. Well, it is. You don't have to use a drum sander anymore. That's the major thing. <laughs> Uh, I, I agree with you almost 100%. Uh, it's really weird because we were talking about this two or three months ago. Yeah. And and I actually, I have a piece up at the house, so I'll, I'll get it next week if we, but I asked Ed, I said, well, do you really need to run, after you run your wood through your wonderful thickness planer, do you really need to run through the sanding machine? And so he did a, he ran a piece through his machine, through the, the carbide bladed, thickness planer, both sides, and then he ran one side through the sander. You didn't really have to do the sanding machine, except in one, the one inch, there was a little bit of snipe off of yeah, the thickness very, planer. Oh, very minute. That you could sand out with 120 on a hand sander in three seconds. One thing about the carbide, I've got the general, but mine are half inch, uh, half inch wide, inch long. Uh, they're only sharp on two sides. I rotated them after six years, and I probably really didn't have to do that either. But um, I have a lot of curly maple that I hardly get any tear out anymore. Um, the straight knife one, I had problems with. Yeah. And, and in my role as the odd man out, I have high speed steel, a 10 and a quarter inch planer, high speed steel, uh, I only run really good walnut. Joan runs pine through it once in a while. <clears throat> I have not sharpened the blades probably in three years. Wow. 
and it, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't recommend it, but it's just the, I, I, I need it. Ten and a quarter is all I need. It, it, well, here, here's another question that I wasn't aware of until about five or six years ago. I went down to Harbor Freight and I bought a very inexpensive <laughs> thickness planer and I used, I used it, I thought I was going to use it just to run rough lumber through because God knows there's stones in it or whatever. I get 19,000 cuts per minute with that planer and the pieces come off like glass. I think the question to ask with these other planers is how many cuts a minute are you getting? If you're only getting two cuts a minute, it's going to go ka chunk, ka chunk. It's going to chew your wood up. But if it's close to fifteen to twenty thousand cuts per, the machine runs at nine thousand RPM. Yeah. So it's eighteen thousand cuts per minute, and they come off like glass. And it's a hundred and seventy-nine dollar planer. Now, I don't know what the Dewalt or any of these other smaller planers run at, but that's an interest. I'm going to look into it and look at the specs and I'll report back next week. <laughs> I think uh, one, of the, one of the big questions is what do you do if you don't have a joiner or a planer and how do you uh, 